interview with uh, Jim Armstrong from uh, Raw Combatives, Raw Life. Uh, Raw Life Australia now. Raw Life as Australia well. as well. And uh, his, his brand new facility, I uh, was just invited down to participate in a seminar that he's just put on on power generation. Uh, Jim and Jez delivered a fantastic seminar, so why not uh, have, a, have a quick word and uh, talk to the man himself about what, what we just covered and, uh, and generate a little bit of bonus content for the, for the listeners of the podcast, as well as, uh, <laughs> as, well as some, some publicity for, uh, for Raw Life Australia. So, Jim, thanks very much for inviting me down. No worries, it's great. Thanks for coming down and taking the videos. It's brilliant. Yeah. And, uh, one thing that was really interesting, I've never seen done before in a, you know, I guess, a striking seminar. Uh, and especially in a reality-based self-defense seminar, is you started the class with push hands. Yep. So a very traditional exercise. Yep. Uh, can you just explain your, your logic or your theory behind why you like using push hands? So I use push hands in, in almost everything I do, from stick fighting to kickboxing to ground fighting. I put it in everything. Everything I do, I put it in there because I find it helps you get rid of your ego a little bit. I know there's, there's a bit of talk about ego's bad, ego's good. It's times when you need it and times when you don't need it, but if you're learning, ego is not a place for it. So I find with the pushing hands, if you're doing it correctly, and everyone's being soft and paying attention to their internal, then it makes a difference. And I think it helps set a standard for the class, for learning, instead of getting up there and doing hard exercise, going, right, let's do this, because everyone's hyped up and they want to go, whereas I'm trying to create a, a better environment for people to learn in. So I feel that's a better way. If I was just preaching uh, reality based, um, it's about protecting yourself or it's about violence or fighting, then I might not touch that and that's what the seminar. But then again, I might. It just depends. Uh, but that's different. It's completely different. Today was about learning how your body and your mind work together to generate power. Mm. And the connections between the, the physical awareness that you develop with push hands and the power generation, can you expand upon that a little bit? Oh, it's huge. So the, one of the main things with pushing hands is being attached to the ground. And I find most people are either not attached to the ground at all, or they're just balancing on the earth constantly. There's very few people who are actually attached to the earth. And again, it may, it's quite hard and you can't really say it, but you have to feel it. So with power generation, if there's an old um, let's say adage, uh, I'm sure it's not the right word, uh, but firing a, a cannon out of the canoe. If you fire a cannon and kill, the cannon's not going to go very far because the cannon's going to go all the way back because it's not stable. So to produce power, you have to understand how to be attached to the ground. Your balance and your structure are paramount. And that also allows you to be, uh, or to have the ability to problem solve and to think cognitively. Because if you're constantly balancing part of your inner being is in there looking at that. And one of the things that we do sometimes we get people to do a standing meditation, which is really funny because you get people to stand and you'll see the ones that are attached to the earth and the ones that are. Mm. The ones that are, as soon as they close their eyes, you'll see them, and they're almost catching themselves from falling. And then you'll get people who are just there. I say, no, they're attached to the ground. So being attached to the ground, huge difference in power generation. Mm, that's really interesting. Uh, and as I said, it's, it's such a, when you, when you see it, it makes all the sense in the world. But yep. So seldom taught, everyone wants to just line up on a heavy bag and bang away. Correct. Uh, yes. And uh, it's really, really interesting the, the way you approach that. Uh, and then you sort of moved into discussing the cylinder theory yep. and the idea of, of, of basically uh, utilizing your own cylinder but, but uh, destabilizing or, or impacting the other person's cylinder. Yep. You sort of expand upon like a, a one minute version of, of what the cylinder is. Okay, the, the cylinder, is, it, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a theory. Uh, so it's and, and what I say about theories, theories don't have to be real. They just have to produce results. So you don't really have a cylinder inside of you. So when I teach this, sometimes I'll teach it like we go, this is your cylinder, but please remember, it doesn't exist. And people go, what? But so a, a quick breakdown of it is, is we're going to split the body and the sagittal plane, which is straight down the center, left to right, and then I'm going to split it in the frontal plane, so front to back. And where those two intersect, that's the very center of your being. That's where all of your balance is. That's your balance point. So once you understand that, uh, I can understand that when I'm pushing you. So most people, if I'm just even pushing you gently, I'm going to your shoulder at the minute. If I'm pushing you in here and I'm using, like, trying to push your, your whole body in here, it's going to look something like that. But if I'm just thinking of that cylinder, 
it, all of a sudden it changes. My, my awareness of it changes mm -hmm. on what I can do to your money. You don't really understand it. You understand this? Yeah. You don't understand this. Yeah. And also from my point of view, I'm not doing this with an arm, I'm doing this mm. from my cylinder. Mm. I mean, cylinder theory is massive, there's so many things attached to it, but there's a base, it's about understanding theirs and how to control it, whether I'm taking you down, I'm throwing you, I'm hitting you with a stick, uh, or I'm grappling with you on the floor. And you, you can't tell when you see people whether they're complicit with each other, necessarily. Uh, there is a massive difference. Like. Jim was demonstrating on me during some of the breaks, and I can't explain how how different it feels uh, when, when you use the cylinder as opposed to you know, using muscular force. And I, I'm the first person to shoot down any martial arts woo woo of fireballs and chi, and like I, I'll destroy anyone who's doing that kind of nonsense because I think it harms all of us. But this could be mistaken for that because oh, you can't exactly. visually see it, yeah. but it's real. It's 100% real. So if you get a chance to check it out, make sure you do. Uh, Jim, just for, for the, uh, I guess for the last little thing, yep. uh, you talked a little bit about using natural human movements as opposed to stylized movements. Yep. And the example you used was uh, talking about uh, Thai style knees, or at least the Western interpretation of a Thai yes. style knee. Correct. Uh, and how there's a lot of conflicting movements going on with a, with an arching and a twisting and a pivoting when realistically all we're trying to do is get force going forward. So just want to expand upon that a little bit. Okay, so everyone in the martial arts, you have this big thing about like my style is better than yours or my system is better than yours. I think it, just, it isn't. Like everyone's got their own idea and that's fine, but at the end of the day, the, the only style out there is human style. There is nothing else. Everyone's basically the same, yeah, unless you know, something's missing. And then you're going to have to change certain parts of that. So what we want to base it on is how we move as humans. So doing something, whether it's Thai style, French style, or Chinese style, it just doesn't make sense to me. And especially when people uh, get attached to a style and go, well, this is it. Like, like people want to belong in a box. Like they want a box of stuff to go, this is everything. And it just, mm -hmm. like, that's not true for anything in life. Mm -hmm. it's, it's different. If I, if I give people... With my teaching, most people want to give you a box with everything in the go, okay, so you've done your black belt, you've done this, and now, now there you go. There's your Krav Maga, or whatever it is, there you go, you've got it, it's in the box, and that's yours. Yeah. But then you've got to open that box, and say, well, where this bit go? I, I don't really know, it's in a nice box, so I can't really take it out and put it in me. Mm. What I have a tendency to do with this sort of teaching, like a human, is give you the parts, and there isn't a box, and you've got to put the parts in it again. Oh, so that belongs there, that's why we do this. Okay, that makes sense, that's how I walk. Whereas if we're looking at, say, that Thai style knee or the Western version of it on the knee, and we're leaning back and coming up and thrusting this forward, and people say, oh, yeah, this is to counteract the balance in here. But then if you listen to some of the old Thai guys, which I have done recently, and these guys are going, no, no, you don't do that. You stay upright as you knee. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh. And it's funny, when you when you find someone that you already profess to go, that's it, you, you are attached to it. You go, oh, I've done things right. It's brilliant. But what I like to do is go, Okay, well that's good, we're on a similar page, which is fantastic, but that still doesn't mean it's right. Like, I still have to disprove this a million times. And that's mm -hmm. what I try to do with everything. I want people to disprove it, I want to disprove it, I just don't want to get into that game of what we think is best, this is the correct thing to do. It's, everything's in flux. Always yep. fantastic, it's like. Awesome. Thanks very much for the invite. It was, it was no, a great time. Excellent. And, Thank you very uh, much. We'll do it again soon. <laughs>